What's happened to the American dream? To own a home, take family vacations, send the kids to college, retirement. Most of us know we aren't doing too well financially. It has become harder and harder just to make ends meet, much less have the extras we thought we could more or less take for granted as we worked harder, moved up the ladder, and made more money. I work very hard, lots of hours, and I still can't get the dreams that I want, like buying a house. Well, I'm living on Social Security, which is not enough, plus the little that I've saved and a very small government pension, and it really makes you sweat to get by on things. I'm making more money now than I have before, although I still don't have any money at the end of the week to do anything with. I work really hard every day, and it's, it's hard to save money. We're just getting, getting by on Social Security, but if my kids when their time comes, I don't think they're going to get it. I'm just getting by. Things are not the way they should be. It's very frustrating to think about these things because, you know, when you're working real hard, you want to see your energies amount to something. And sometimes you feel like uh, it's not within your grasp anymore. To me, there's no solution. I, I don't see a solution to this. I really don't. No solutions? Don't be too sure. The question really is, can you still make money and become financially secure in the 80s? Can you make your dreams come true? Well, there are ways. And for the next half hour, we will meet experts and ordinary people from across the country. Money, how to make it with George Redding. Robert Bruss, real estate columnist and author of The Smart Investor's Guide to Real Estate. William Nickerson, real estate investor and author of How I Turn a Thousand into Five Million in Real Estate. John and Greg Rice, the world's smallest twins who made it big in real estate. Tom Vu, lecturer and author of the Profit, Profit, Profit Seminar, the man who is setting new trends on how to make money in the 80s. The first and most obvious question about making money is how? Well, if you happen to have some money, you normally think of things like stocks, bonds, life insurance, savings accounts, a little real estate, perhaps even gold or precious gems. But what if you have no money, or worse, no credit? Maybe you're out of work, you have no income. Now, how in the world can you even begin to make your dreams come true under such circumstances? Only about 2% of all Americans retire in luxury or even real comfort, financially secure, independent, living the good life. Most, about 98%, live out their so-called golden years in some degree of poverty, official poverty, on welfare, trying to exist on social security and food stamps, or dependent on relatives. Not a pretty picture, is it? It doesn't have to happen to you. So what are the problems? What's keeping you from beginning to make your dreams come true? Our father was probably the hardest working man that I knew. But he wasn't able to accumulate much as far as monetary things are concerned because he didn't realize that there are two different kinds of work. There's hard work and there's smart work. People have to realize that there is another way to make money if they're just willing to go out and learn those ways. People have all sorts of reasons or excuses for not getting ahead or wealthy. I'm not rich because I had a bad basic education. I'll never get rich unless I win a lottery or something. I don't think I have a good chance of, you know, getting rich because of the financial situation right now, the jobs and everything. Me get rich? I'll never get rich. I'll just get by. I don't think I'll ever get rich because I'm not engaged in the work that I did before and I'm frankly I'm too old to be hired by any of the companies that I, the types of companies that I worked with before. People use all sorts of excuses why they don't do something with their lives. Can you imagine all the excuses that John and I could have used? We realized early on that excuses don't get you anywhere. I mean, can you imagine the excuses that we could have come up with? So what do you do if you really desire to get ahead? 
How do you recognize and take advantage of the opportunities? But what happens if you have no money? Or even worse, no credit? What then? Most people think that it takes money to make money in this country. It doesn't take money to make money. It takes money to lose money. But if you have no money to begin with, then anything that you make is obviously profit to you. I've met people that say, I had $200,000 and I invested in the stock market, and six, six weeks later, I was flat broke. Well, that's the prime example that it takes money to lose money. If you never had the $200,000 to start with, you wouldn't have made that investment. But if you're willing to learn the things that it takes to become a success, then you can start with nothing and you can accumulate a lot of money. Through my newspaper columns, which are syndicated around the country, I try to encourage people to invest in real estate, starting with their personal residence and then later on buying investment property. Because I know of no safer investment than real estate for the long term. And for somebody who wants financial independence, I don't know of any more secure, direct method than investing in real estate. So I take every opportunity that I can to encourage people to get started investing, and if you already own a few properties, to buy a few more and to learn new techniques for buying those additional properties. Everyone knows it takes money to make money, but what many people don't know is it doesn't have to be your money. People assume that in order to buy real estate, you have to have a good job, good credit, and a large down payment. But that simply isn't true anymore. By using some safe, simple, creative financing techniques, you can go out and buy a lot of real estate without using any of your own money. The old way is to take $10,000, use it as a down payment, and buy just one house. But what you should do instead is use some simple creative financing techniques, take that same $10,000 and buy up the 10 houses or even more. Now, instead of $20,000 profit, you're looking at up to $200,000 profit. John and I made more money in one real estate transaction than our father made in an entire year working in the salary job that he was in. And that's when we realized that, hey, this is probably the vehicle that we've been looking for. This is the key to the success that we've been dreaming of as children. When we come back, we'll talk to one of those who not only made it, but is teaching others how to. Are you doing it? I think that poor people should take rich people to lunch, and the poor people should pay for the lunch. And a lot of people say, well, that should be the other way around. I mean, the rich person should pay for the poor people's lunch. Well. What can a rich person learn from someone who's poor, except for maybe the fact that they don't want to be poor anymore? But there's a lot that poor people can learn from rich people. If you really want to become financially independent or successful, you've got to start associating with people who are already doing it. Recently, I met a self-made man who never gave himself any excuses for not getting rich. Tom Boo is a real estate expert who has become wealthy and now teaches others how to. Tell me, Tom, how did you get started? When I first came to this country, I was a bus boy. I had no money, that's why I had to work hard to support the family. During that time, I always wanted to be a waiter. And the people I worked for kept promising me that they're going to make me a waiter. But the promotion never came. So the first thing I learned out of life is, in order to get ahead, you cannot depend on others to help you. You must depend on yourself. You must always believe that you are in control of your own financial destiny. Okay, that sounds good. But what's the secret to becoming wealthy? Here's three steps that I tell people. First, you must set a goal. Maybe you don't want to become a millionaire. You just want to be able to retire and travel. That's fine, as long as you are comfortable with it. Number two is go out there and acquire the correct knowledge. The specific roadmap show you exactly how to get there. And third, very simple, just go out there and do it. Everybody have a potential to make a lot of money, but you must set a goal for yourself and do it, because if you aim at nothing, you surely hit it. Just like if you do nothing, you will get nowhere. Tom, tell me, what's the first question people ask you in your seminars? During my lectures, people always come to me and ask me what is the best investment around. Which is? Now, the answer may be unusual, but I'm going to give you the world's safest investment. An investment in yourself. It's easy to become wealthy in today's economy, but you cannot let banker, broker, insurance salesman do your own thinking for you. You have to learn how to do it on your own. There's actually, there's only 
two ways to learn that experience is number one is you go through the school of hard knocks or number two is you learn it through other people's experience to save times and prevent mistakes. Let me give you a little test. It's for your own good, so be as honest as you can. The question is, what do you want out of life? I want to be a millionaire. I want to retire and travel. I want enough money to be independent, quit my job and get away from my boss. I want to turn off the TV and think about it later. Financial security is not for me right now. Let me repeat. I want to be a millionaire. I want to retire and travel. I want enough money to be independent. I'll think about it later. This may seem silly, but I'm trying to make a point. If you answered yes to any of these questions, the experts say you'll never make it. Why? Because your goals are far too vague. Well, you might get some comfort from knowing that we are taught or programmed to fail from the time we start school. Think about it. We're taught just to make good grades, get a job, save money, and so on. Not the road to financial success. Because if all these things really did work, we wouldn't have the millions of old poor people who are the living proof that the old systems, however well-intentioned, just don't work any longer in today's economy. So you ask yourself, what can I do to turn it around for me? You educate yourself to meet the realities of today. One of the most effective way that thousands of America are doing is short-term education with specific goals, adult education classes, seminars, training in motivation for achieving their goals. What do these kinds of classes do for you in a relatively short period of time, which can mean a lifetime of financial security? Our experts have given you some idea of how real estate works, and they teach seminars on how to make it work for you. Thousands of people have attended these seminars. Take Charlie Cope, for example. He started with a few hundred dollars and made several thousand dollars profit in less than a week. I couldn't believe that a person could actually buy and sell real estate with no money, no credit, or no formal education, all of which that I don't have. But since learning the techniques afforded me, I've been able to put thousands of dollars in my pocket on a regular basis. Sam and Julie Hawkins found this house that was about to be seized by the IRS. They were able to buy it for $24,000 below market value. Julie and I now enjoy the financial freedom that we've always wanted. In fact, we don't have to worry about Social Security, an 8-to-5 job, but only through security through our own efforts. Best of all, I guess, is the fact that Julie and I can work together and close deals together and spend the time together each and every day enjoying ourselves. Hollis Durity makes his money by spending lots of time looking for bargain properties that were overlooked by others. It's a beautiful endeavor, this real estate game, as the advantages are all written for us to enjoy, whereby we can obtain all these properties and keep the profits by not paying taxes. This makes you wealthy, you can pyramid your investment into millions and enjoy it forever. Ed Hayden started investing in real estate as a tax shelter and soon realized other benefits from that approach. During the past 30 days, I've acquired property with a value of a million dollars. I've increased my net worth by a quarter of a million dollars. I plan to acquire an additional $5 million worth of property in the next six months. I believe anyone can have the same success that I've had in real estate. The Fabians use creative financing to assume a mortgage at a low interest rate. This is the house we just bought. It appraised for $98,000 and we were able to get it for fifty-five. dollars What this has done has given me confidence in myself that I know I have the ability to be able to do this. And he has confidence in me too. At first, I didn't feel that deals like this were possible but we have the house and we have our $30,000 profit and I certainly believe now. Americans have achieved financial independence by investing in real estate. Join the thousands of people who are already using the profit investment plan to make money in the 80s. Learn from America's leading experts the safe, simple, sure way to start with little or no cash, even no credit. Don't miss this opportunity to attend the free 90-minute seminar in your hometown. 
this week only at the following locations. Monday, June 17th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Hyatt Regency. 2 Fountain Plaza, corner of Huron and Pearl Streets, Buffalo, New York. Tuesday, June 18th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Executive Inn. 4243 Genesee Street, across from the Buffalo Airport, Buffalo, New York. Remember, that's Monday, June 17th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Hyatt Regency. 2 Fountain Plaza, corner of Huron and Pearl Streets, Buffalo, New York. Tuesday, June 18th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Executive Inn. 4243 Genesee Street, across from the Buffalo Airport, Buffalo, New York. You guys are so successful because you're lucky. You're just three feet tall. And I tell them, hey, wait a minute. I spelled luck, W-O-R-K, and find that the harder we work, the luckier we get. And it'll work for you if you're three feet tall, six feet tall, white, black, green, or paisley print. Having the courage to get started is probably the toughest thing, to get started to begin with. And the fact that you have other students that you're taking attending in seminar helps to give you that courage. In fact, I feel that I used to feel uh, the nitty-gritty, all the uh, nuts and bolts. That was the only thing that mattered. But now I feel that's only about half the battle. The other half is to help encourage you, give you all these examples and show how other people are doing to encourage you to get off the fence and do something. My advice to anyone who's interested in gaining financial independence is to get started in real estate investing by first getting an education on what to do, how to invest in that first property is the hardest part of getting started in real estate. And I think reading books, listening to tapes, and going to seminars are probably the best methods to build confidence so that when you buy that first investment property, you know you're doing the right thing. I'd hate to think of what Greg and I'd be doing if we wouldn't have found real estate. I mean, you know, gosh, maybe we'd have been working in a circus or maybe in the back room of some big accounting office, putting some little figures in the little boxes. It'd be somebody else's little figures and somebody else's little boxes. But, but being that we found real estate, it's given us the financial security and the financial freedom to go out and do the things that we want to do. You'll have no trouble finding people that'll tell you hundreds of reasons why you can't do something with your lives. John and I had people tell us that when we got into the real estate business. They told us, you guys better not get into that business because people might not take you serious enough. Well, fortunately, we didn't listen to those people. And whenever anybody tells you you can't do something, take a look at them. Are they really as successful as you want to be? Tom, tell me, what is the best way to invest in the 80s? In order to successfully invest in the 80s, you have to buy bargain properties. Let me show you what I mean. The major trend in real estate in the 1960s was location, location, location. Mm -hmm. The trend in the 1970s was terms, terms, terms. It didn't matter how much you pay for your property as long as you get your terms. Sure. That just doesn't work anymore. The new trend in real estate is profit, profit, profit. So you don't have to wait five years for profit anymore when you can have it immediately. That's why I advocate buying bargain properties. Bargain properties does not have to be a rundown property. When I say bargain properties, I mean in terms of price. Buying a nice piece of property at below market value provides you with two opportunities. First, you can resell it to make an instant cash profit. Or number two, you can hold on to it and it will immediately increase your net worth. Today's economy offers the greatest opportunity in 50 years to buy real estate at bargain prices. So the time to start is now. Bargain price real estate is a great investment because you're buying below market value, usually 20 to 30 percent, sometimes even 50 percent below the true market value of the property. And the reason that bargain price real estate is such a great investment is you get your profit going into the property. And if you decide to make a quick turnaround and resell it within a month or two, that's fine. Or if you want to hold it for a long period of time, you've already got your profit built in, even though uh, the property may not uh, rapidly appreciate in value for another year or two. But you've got that profit locked in by buying bargain price real estate right up front. In this crazy economy that we're in today, there are still some excellent buys in real estate. And, and when I'm talking about good buys in real estate, I'm not talking about going and buying some rundown house somewhere that needs a lot of work, because Greg and I certainly can't do that. We couldn't do that. Can you imagine me trying to paint a house like that? I might do a great job from the doorknob level down, but who would appreciate a paint job like that? What we try to do is we try to go out and find distressed sellers, not distressed properties. I'm often asked why don't more people get into real estate investment since it uh, has proven to be such a worthwhile and safe investment. 
Uh, most of them, it's fear. People are afraid to do something different. And the only way they can uh, overcome that fear is to get a bigger education, either through books or attending seminars. This helps to give them the courage to go ahead and do something about it. There are many people in this world who aren't where they'd like to be financially, and it's not because any of them ever planned to fail. It's just that most of them fail to plan. And it's just that simple. You see, there's no magic secret to getting rich. You just gotta learn how to do it and then go out and do it. The majority of America's richest people made their fortunes in real estate, and many of them did it in bad times. Right now, thousands use the Profit Investment Plan with no speculation, no credit, and with little or no cash. Famous real estate expert Tom Vu wants to show you how to become financially independent in today's economy. Learn the safe, simple, sure way to make money in real estate, even if prices are not going up. Discover the secret to financial freedom at the following free 90-minute seminars, starting at 8 p.m. Monday, June 17th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Hyatt Regency. 2 Fountain Plaza, corner of Huron and Pearl Streets, Buffalo, New York. Tuesday, June 18th at 2 and 8 p.m. at the Executive Inn. 4243 Genesee Street, across from the Buffalo Airport, Buffalo, New York. Over 90% of the people in America at age 65 are flat broke, or they're economically dependent on somebody else for their livelihood, whether it be Social Security or family or church organizations or something. And the reason that most people end up that way is not because they're lazy and not because they haven't worked hard all their life, because most of them have. The reason that they end up having to depend on someone else financially is because they never took time to make plans. They never took time to do the things that they would have to do to ensure them a financial future. There was a recent uh, report in the U.S. News and World Report where they counted the number of millionaires, 638,000 millionaires in the country, and 57,000 in the last year alone. Now, when I started out, there were only 8,500 total. So now there's more in one year than the total then, about seven times as many, and most of them in real, real estate. I think anyone who's renting now, unless they're just going to be in the region for a very short time, should make plans to buy their personal residence. Because renting just means they're wasting their money on rent that's never going to produce a return. I've never known anyone who gets rich from renting. But I do know a lot of people who've gotten very, very wealthy by owning real estate, starting with their first home and then moving on to investment property such as apartments, offices, commercial property, or as I do, buying rental houses. There are many ways to make money in real estate. John and I know from personal experience that one way is to buy when property values are down and hold on to them until they increase in value. But the important thing is that you take advantage and you do buy. Because a lot of people sit around and wait and they say, well, I'm going to wait till the prices change, till they come down or whatever. And they'll, those are the ones that will sit around and say, I could have bought that property for $10,000 an acre, and today it's selling for $100,000 an acre. 10 years from now, they'll be saying the same thing, except the numbers will just be a little different. Some people ask, well, if it's so easy the way you talk, it sounds real easy, and you know of all these people that are doing it, why doesn't everybody do it? Well, you do have to have certain attributes. I say you only need average savings, average luck, but you do need to have the ambition to want to get ahead. Some people just don't give a damn. They don't, they're not concerned with getting ahead and that's their privilege. But if you want to get ahead, you, and follow my suggestions, it's pretty hard for you to miss. The other attributes you need, you need the courage to get off the fence and do something about it. Every day, people stand at the crossroads of life. They have to make the decision on which way to go. Most people go down the same road that they went down yesterday because they know that's safe. But a few people stand there and they make the decision, to make the decision to make change in their lives, to try uncharted paths. Those are the people that are actually going out and making change in their lives. The important thing is that you make the decision to do it now. What have we learned here today? First, you must set goals. Second, you must make plans, long range plans. Third, you must learn how to implement those plans. Go to classes, seminars, lectures, and read books. 
And finally, just go out and do it.